Um, Um, again, the familiar is this, is the slide uh, visible and am I audible to everyone? Yes, Anurag, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, well, the title of my seminar presentation is uh, Tuberculosis Under, Under Nutrition, Recognizing and Addressing the Elephant in the Room. Um, just would like to start with saluting Dr. William Osler, who was also a professor of med uh, medicine at McGill for some years. And it was for the first time that as an undergraduate, I uh, heard somebody saying not uh, TB as an infectious disease, but as a social disease with medical aspects. And Osler has been a huge influence on my life. Uh, another uh, key person from the era um, of Osler was Dr. Trudeau, who said uh, uh, things more bluntly in the realm of you know social uh, uh, status and outcomes. I have no conflicts of interest to declare. And uh, <clears throat> yes, so I have been witness to a lot of suffering and I continue to do so. This presentation uh, is in three parts. Um, first is uh, an overview and uh, setting the context for uh, the work that we did and why uh, I believe that recognizing and addressing this is especially relevant in the context of the new strategy. So um, uh, the second part is recognizing the elephant in the room, recognizing undernutrition as a serious comorbidity, as a widely prevalent risk factor, which is driving TB uh, epidemic in India and South Asia, and a unique uh, revisiting of a historic socio-medical experiment, which uh, gives us in, uh, you know, um, evidence on the uh, potential role of nutrition in prevention of TB. I will also discuss our ongoing trial in Jharkhand, uh, which uh, uh, Madhukar alluded to, and some of the preliminary findings. So uh, uh, the title of this slide is taken from an editorial written by Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, accompanying one of our papers. And uh, so uh, these are strongly linked but ignored. And if you look at the size of the problem, uh, you can uh, understand the elephantine proportions. India has the highest number of malnourished people, both adults and children globally. These are the most current data of uh, low BMI prevalence in India, still sizable. And I would say this is an average which doesn't reflect the status of uh, you know, uh, what is happening in poor communities and marginalized communities. Uh, 140 million uh, adults with low BMI that could constitute a country by itself. And a very sizable proportion of deaths occurring on, uh, under five years, nearly half of which are related to malnutrition. If you take the TB picture in India, we have a huge re reservoir of patients with latent TB infection uh, at an estimated 40% of our population, uh, the highest TB incidence in the world, the highest number of TB deaths in the world, and the TB uh, problem casts a shadow on other aspects of people's lives actually almost having a very uh, uh, long-lasting impact on the household and a descent to poverty. Now, uh, when, we, uh, when Dr. Swamya said that this has been ignored, this is uh, actually, yeah, so this is a, a review article on latent TB infection published in 2015, which somehow omitted mentioning undernutrition as one of the risk factors for progression of latent TB infection. Um, uh, in the pre-chemotherapy era, nutrition was important, considered important, vital uh, in the prevention as well as uh, uh, care of TB patients. And if you see the whole range of documents starting from the 1900s, prevention of TB by Arthur Newsom, he said the uh, program should do whatever is practicable to prevent malnutrition, to prevent TB. Again, a, a global kind of review by John McDougall, who was the first uh, TB officer at WHO, Again, emphasizing the uh, vital role of uh, nutrition and prevention of TB. Uh, the most seminal um, uh, work was actually the publication of this monograph by the WHO in 1968 about the interactions of nutrition and infection, which drew uh, you know, attention to the fact by an extensive review uh, to the fact that nutrition uh, is a risk factor for more frequent and more severe infections. 
and infections in turn uh, adversely uh, affect uh, you know nutritional status and tb we figured very prominently in this uh, monograph however we don't really see much reference to this work uh, in the you know uh, tb discourse of that time which really emphasize only detection of cases and treatment of cases again apart from some of these opinions uh, expressed in the previous slide there was um, a strong data from cohort studies done between 1949 to 2005 which showed consistently uh, inverse and exponential relationship between low bmi uh, which represented undernutrition and tb incidence and this uh, was published in 2010 and the uh, implication for tb control is that uh, the authors concluded that potentially uh, uh, per, uh, per unit increase in bmi there could be a significant decline in tb incidence and this is especially important uh, because even in the current times we are uh, uh, you know having a tb decline uh, of 2 to 3% per year so uh, this was the first time that you saw in a global tb report uh the number of uh, cases of tb in the world which were attributable to the major risk factors and this was in 2020 and uh, not surprisingly for people like us undernourishment was seen as the major uh, contributor to tb burden in the world with an estimated 2.2 million cases per year which was more than the combined proportion attributable to diabetes hiv infection and alcohol use and this is understandable because uh, uh, tb is a function of uh, infection but also a function of the immunity and malnutrition has been long known to be the leading uh, cause of uh, impaired immunity across the world and uh, uh, the related immune deficiency was labeled as nutritionally acquired immune deficiency by one leading nutritionist just to give a counter uh, thing to aids so it was called an aids now how can one miss an elephant in the room and this is something uh, to think about uh we can suffer from a cognitive bias as an in, un, unintentional blindness or perpetual blindness where we can't see the problem it could be a visual field effect in the case of tb i think there is a tunnel vision uh i do not uh, you know uh, um, the germ theory has given us many useful things in tb Uh, uh you know in terms of diagnostics and therapeutics but it is also constricted our vision and we sometimes don't see the larger picture and finally uh, douglas adams in one of the novels wrote about the scp field or somebody else's problem and uh, uh, this is something that we can't see or don't see or brain doesn't uh, let us see because we think it's somebody else's problem and that partly is you know sometimes the uh, you know view on uh, under nutrition and poverty in in terms of tb there have been some fragmented views on uh, the whole problem of under nutrition you know uh, some people uh, from their own perspectives emphasize the increasing prevalence of uh, obesity rather than the persistence of under nutrition in the world some people limit their discussion on you know maternal and child nutrition and uh, pay little attention to adult nutrition micronutrient versus macronutrient is another uh, dichotomy which is artificial and other things so but in the case of tb i think it's important to know that it's important ac across uh, age groups uh, under nutrition here both macro and micro are important and uh, tb is both a cause as well as a consequence of under nutrition uh under nutrition uh, can result from active tb because uh, of disease related malnutrition because of inflammation but the kind of uh, uh, nutrition status we see in countries like india is not just because of the disease but is a combination of uh, hunger related malnutrition and disease related malnutrition and that is the reason why we see uh, such low levels of uh, nutrition in in patients with tb in india uh, just highlight some the uh, the evolution of tb strategies uh, to uh, uh, lay the context so the dots plus strategy which was uh, operative between uh, you know the these years basically uh, concentrated on case detection and standardized short course chemotherapy uh, and direct observation the stop tb strategy took this a little ahead by incorporating um, treatment of tb hiv and multi drug resistant tb and talking of health systems and engaging all care providers but it was basically still uh, um, 
TB treatment plus some comorbid conditions and MDR-TB. Now the gap here is in these treatment-based strategies which uh, uh, can explain why they have not been successful in decreasing TB burden is the cases of TB are uh, arising of this huge pool of patients with uh, people with latent TB infection and estimated 1.7 billion globally, out of which is only a certain proportion uh, are developing active TB. The TB treatment strategy really uh, just interrupts uh, transmission to uh, other people and shortens the duration of transmission really. But there is no currently widely applied strategy for preventing progression from uh, latent TB to active TB. So uh, the LTBI treatment poses a lot of operational issues uh, because of the large numbers. We don't have an effective vaccine which can prevent adult TB. So the thing is that we should still, uh, um, uh, like in the case of uh, non-communicable disease, address the risk factors of, of which undernutrition is a major one. So thankfully, the current uh, NTB strategy is a more uh, comprehensive uh, kind of strategy which addresses uh, these other issues. And for the first time in the TB strategy lexicon, there are words which have to be converted into actions if they have to mean anything. So the underlying thing is uh, principle is supposed to be the protection of ethics, human rights, and equity. In the case of TB care, the strategy talks of patient-centered care, patient support, and uh, addressing comorbidities. And in the case of TB prevention, it talks of social protection, poverty alle alleviation, and other social determinants. And if we reflect on uh, uh, the problem of undernutrition, actually, it uh, fits neatly into all these, uh, you know, uh, uh, new emerging themes. So we know that M tuberculosis is a necessary but not a sufficient cause of tuberculosis uh, because uh, uh, immunity plays a critical role and undernutrition impairs immunity. So undernutrition is a risk factor which needs to be addressed in high TB burden countries, uh, which have a significant undernutrition problem. People do not die of TB, but they die of severe TB or severe comorbidity or both. So factors which will uh, increase the extent of, you know, the severity of TB, which includes HIV uh, and it also includes uh, undernutrition, uh, are important to address if you have to uh, prevent TB deaths. And finally, a TB program uh, is necessary but not sufficient to prevent uh, TB uh, poor outcomes in patients because this is linked to social determinants. And work has shown that uh, if you talk of poverty and the relationship of poverty and TB, uh, a major part of it is mediated also uh, through the pathway of undernutrition, which is closely linked to poverty. Uh, 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 nutritional uh, wasting has always been associated with uh, tuberculosis. So it was surprising to us to find uh, in our work in rural India that there was not much data on what, what were the uh, you know, nutritional status of patients at diagnosis and at, uh, after treatment, and what was its impact with TB mortality. So this was a paper of nearly 1,700 patients for, uh, of about uh, you know, five years data, and uh, um, uh, conducted in rural India. Uh, this is probably, again, some of the lowest weights recorded anywhere in the world at that time. And uh, it indicated highly high prevalence of severe undernutrition with BMIs going down to 10, median weights in adults being 42 and 34 in uh, men and women, again, 50% uh, were below this. And these were thought to be extreme kind of weights, but later the uh, national program figures were not very far off from these figures as well. And these levels of undernutrition were uh, potentially lethal, um, increasing the risk of mortality by two to fourfold. Now, people often talk of a bi-directional relationship between TB and undernutrition, but actually it is a vicious cycle where undernutrition by impairing um, immunity leads to tuberculosis, which in turn uh, worsens the undernutrition because of its effect on uh, appetite and the cy uh, cytokines. And this in turn, makes the TB more extensive. And this worsening cycle of undernutrition and more extensive TB culminates in death. And uh, undernutrition has been found to be a predictor of early mortality in TB. We also found in this cohort in rural India that weight gains were very uh, suboptimal in the absence of nutrition support. So patients from uh, very severe undernutrition became moderately severe by the end of therapy, uh, uh, median of three kg weight gain only 
and most remained undernourished even at the end of treatment, which has its own implications for long-term uh, outcomes in these patients. Now, uh, this is a photograph actually uh, 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 in a letter uh, in 2014 submitted to a journal from uh, our group in uh, Janswa Sayo. And uh, it was disturbing to see that the same low weights persisted. Now, uh, it might seem that, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the attention to these low weights really happened uh, only uh, because of our large study, but actually, even in the case of the Madras trial, the famous trial of home versus sanatorium treatment, when we look at the data, actually the weights are very, very low. And uh, the weight gains were actually uh, much higher in those who were uh, provided sanatorium treatment with a better diet. Uh, so I, I do not dispute the fact that it was a landmark study, but somehow the message that diet will not play a, uh, any effect, you know, important role uh, was probably uh, the wrong one. And patients who are severely underweight were deprived of the benefit of a better diet for years. Not only was uh, diet, you know, not available to patients, but drug doses in Indian patients was, uh, you know, in terms of weights was ignored for many years. And this was pointed out again by a, a study from um, uh, what was at that time called Tuberculosis Research Center, Chennai. Now it is NIRT, which pointed out that actually um, uh, Indian patients were receiving much higher doses, uh, which had been established for uh, Western patients without uh, adjustment. And in this national program document in the 1997, of course, uh, there have been corrections later, but initially patients were given drugs, uh, all adults were given the same uh, you know, uh, dose irrespective of body weight. And uh, we realized the horror of this in our rural program where a 28 kg patient was given the dose which would have been given to a 45 kilo person. She developed seizures, fell into the fire, and sustained serious burn injuries. Undernutrition contributes to morbidity, mortality, response to treatment, and long-term outcomes. So it is important both to address during treatment and it has, uh, it has its effect even post-treatment. So undernutrition has been known to uh, uh, increase the extent of disease, uh, pose a risk of higher risk of death, which is about uh, three, threefold higher risk of death almost five times higher risk of drug toxicity with a BMI less than uh, 17. And notably, uh, absorption of key drugs like rifampicin has been noted to be impaired in some studies uh, in undernourished patients. Uh, low BMI and low weight gain have been associated with delayed sputum conversion. I have got anybody interested, I can just direct them to the evidence. I'm just summarizing it here for the time, for the purpose of time, saving time. If a patient gains weight poorly, he is less likely to return to his livelihood, which is often manual labor. And even fourfold uh, uh, higher risk of relapse has been seen in undernourished patients post treatment. Um, uh, there is one other thing of, of utility when you assess the, uh, the nutrition status, it's a very, uh, um, uh, can serve as a good proxy for severe TB because nutrition status and in pulmonary tuberculosis uh, is closely related to severity and which can predict mortality. So in the guidance document for nutritional care and support in India, we have recommended these um, indica indications for referral and possible inpatient care for patients with tuberculosis. Often the issue of uh, uh, nutrition support in TB patients, uh, you know, uh, the discussion wears around to the Cochrane systematic reviews on nutrition supplements for patients with active TB. And usually the uh, comment is that there is no evidence that, uh, you know, nutritional interventions uh, uh, have any benefit. But actually the fine print is that the Cochrane review said that there's been insufficient research in this area to decide really whether they have any beneficial effects on outcomes. So the first Cochrane review in 2008 did not report uh, any trial, uh, the impact on death. There was only one trial which reported weight gain. In the second Cochrane review version, there were 202 patients in two trials which were given macronutrient supplementation here. There were other trials with micro, micronutrients. And in 2016, there were a total of 567 patients in five trials enrolled so far where the effect of food uh, you know, supplementation or high energy uh, uh, supplements had been observed. All these were small studies underpowered, but there was a 
potential uh, you know reduction of tb mortality is seen in this which is not statistically significant uh, so the number of patients dying with tb in india every day is about 1200 and we have only half that figure in uh, rcts enrolled uh, uh, till now so this has been a neglected area but i wonder now whether uh, it is at all ethical to randomize severely un underweight patients to control arm so i don't think you can ethically do a trial on this anymore um, also, uh, the fact is that in all this evidence, we have never uh, really elicited what patients feel and what are their values and expectations. And if you take that into account, uh, the, the uh, jury would be uh, you know, saying something different. Fortunately, the WHO uh, took the Cochrane uh, you know, evidence into account, but made a pragmatic guideline which suggested uh, the recommendation was that nutritional assessment, counseling, and support are an integral part of TB care. Uh, however, the uptake of this globally has not been uh, very good, but India is one of the countries where we adapted this guideline and uh, recommended food support uh, uh, to all TB patients. And these are some of the initiatives in India, this, uh, the guidance document on nutritional care and support, which uh, uh, suggested uh, uh, food support in kind. And uh, I was associated with this uh, formulation of this document. Uh, an app was developed to uh, facilitate nutritional assessment and counseling, uh, which was actually developed with support from the McGill TV Center. But in 2018, because of the operational difficulties, the government decided to give a direct benefit transfer of 500 rupees a month to enable poor patients with TB to get a better diet. Uh, and there has not been a really an impact evaluation of what has been the impact in nutritional and clinical outcomes of this. But uh, this whole strategy is uh, currently probably being revised. The second thing was uh, recognizing the proportion of TB incidence in India attributed to under, uh, under nutrition. I'll just quickly uh, go through this. Uh, Everybody is familiar with the uh, simple formula for estimating the population attributable fraction which is a fraction of the burden of disease which could potentially be eliminated if a particular risk factor were to be eliminated. So here we took the prevalence of undernutrition uh, from the uh, prevalence of low BMI in a national representative sample, the NFHS3, and a risk ratio from a study by uh, Sejelski published in 2012. Because this was one of the few studies where it was, the cohort was from a nationally representative sample and they had particularly seen uh, 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 you know, in, uh, TB incidence below 18.5 BMI. So as I've already pointed out, prevalence of undernutrition in adults was high in India. And this was especially higher in rural areas and in some of the population groups like uh, uh, the scheduled tribes, and of course, amongst the poorest. And if you plugged in the uh, prevalence and the risk ratios here, we estimated almost half of TB in India could be attributable to the effect of low BMI. And this was again uh, higher in uh, the poorer groups and uh, the uh, marginalized communities. Now, uh, now that uh, TB uh, nutrition could have an impact on TB incidence, was there any uh, evidence from the, uh, uh, from the literature on whether adequate nutrition could impact on, could reduce TB incidence? So, uh, there were no trials, but uh, one of the hypotheses raised was by McKeon, who looked at the uh, TB mortality data in UK from 1850 to 1950 and uh, uh, saw that the decline in mortality uh, antedated the uh, discovery of you know, BCG vaccine or chemotherapy. So it was already declining. And he attributed, uh, attributed this to improving living condi conditions of living of which he considered adequate nutrition, improving nutrition as the most important. But there was no real, there has been a lot of controversy around this. But what we saw uh, when we revisited the, uh, uh, the experience of the Papert set settlement provides one uh, proof of, of this McKeon hypothesis. So this was a village settlement for TB patients and their families set up by a social pioneer, uh, Dr. P Pendrel Warrior Jones, and it provided uh, better housing to these families. Uh, they had stable employment, which was in a modified conditions. They were doing uh, 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 labor, which was not heavy. And uh, there was an emphasis on adequate nutrition. 
and uh, they followed up all the uh, families who were uh, you know admitted to the settlement including particularly their household contacts for development of tb disease so the key findings there were that uh, although there was better housing uh, this did not prevent uh, infection and uh, infection was universal by age 5 in uh, you know uh, the cohorts the two cohorts were those who were admitted uh, into papur and the children who were born in it there was zero incidence of tb in children uh, less than 5 years of age who were born in the settlement although they had been exposed to disease and were infected and overall there was quite a, a dramatic uh, reduction of tb incidence when uh, in the contacts when they uh, came to stay in papur and again because they were already infected this decline was uh, uh, because of decreased progression to active tb from infection so this is actually uh, fairly um, robust evidence from an observational kind of uh, study on on uh, the effect of uh, social interventions uh, on tb incidence and warrior jones uh, uh, you know said about uh, food in tb versus fresh air that actually fresh air is a, is, a, is the second most important thing because uh, uh, for protection against disease nutrition is uh, vital again in the pre chemotherapy era there was one natural experiment often quoted where british uh, soldiers who had a red cross ration food ration providing them extra calories and proteins had a very very dramatic 90% reduction you know a, a lower incidence of tb compared to russian soldiers who were living in the same conditions but were having access to a present diet so taking these things forward i i just uh, this is a slide i have used earlier but uh, food rations in undernourished populations can act as a vaccine for tb and which has all these you know useful uh, things which you, you would look for in a vaccine a oral polyvalent vaccine without ipr issues and safe in women and children and with uh, guaranteed guaranteed compliance so finally i would uh, uh, you know discuss uh, the ration study which is currently testing this hypothesis whether addressing undernutrition in um, uh, communities with a high prevalence of uh, undernutrition will uh, can reduce tb incidence so this is uh, going on uh, in the state of jharkhand in eastern india since 2019 august uh, and it's uh, my collab our collaborators are uh, colleagues from the national institute of research in tb and this is funded by the icmr so this ongoing study is um, in uh, in four districts of jharkhand and um, uh, over a very large area in 24 treatment units so it's a cluster randomized uh, trial where in one arm we are providing the uh, patients uh, with uh, uh, nutritional support but not the family members and in the intervention arm both the patient and the family members are given food rations the primary objective as i said was to see the effect of this nutrition supplementation on tb incidence amongst household contacts over a period of 2 years after diagnosis of the index case and we are uh, looking at a number of secondary objectives is uh, the effect on weights in uh, patients and contacts uh, uh, in patients we are looking at uh, whether this affects adherence mortality frequency of major side effects performance status and uh, eventually recurrence of tb within 2 years also and among contacts we are also looking at um, uh, what uh, this intervention might uh, have an impact on non uh, tb infections we are uh, we have a number of sub studies here on smaller samples of patients and contacts evaluating their baseline uh, intake of calories and proteins and then after uh, intervention estimating micronutrient status Uh, evaluating body composition and changes with uh, the intervention and also looking at lymphocyte subsets in both uh, patients and uh, contacts uh, at baseline and following therapy these are some glimpses uh, from this wonderful state uh, uh, you know from the field and some of the most beautiful uh, uh, you know villages and rural houses i have seen only in jharkhand this is a, this is a typical santhali house house you can see the problem of public transport jharkhand is a uh, has a very high forest cover uh, which poses a lot of challenges operationally so uh, the patients uh, in our trial in the both arms are getting a 10 kg food basket consisting of rice roasted bengal gram flour milk powder and oil along with multivitamins and the family members in the intervention arm are getting 
per head 5 kg rice and 1 and 1/2 kg uh, pulses per month along with multivitamins and the cost of this intervention is actually very modest if you see it in dollar terms um, uh, per day so we have uh, the procurement of these food rations is central and it, then it goes to sub depots and from those uh, depots uh, you know it is taken by the field staff uh, to the household of the patient some patients uh, uh, also pick up uh, the rations from the depot if it is con more convenient for them and uh, because of the amount of food rations we have transported um, more than 1100 tons over this period which has uh, you know uh, included the covid pandemic period so it has been a huge challenge and uh, full marks to the team there who has kept us going so the terrain is very challenging uh, there are often no roads and uh, sometimes they have to even cross these streams while you know balancing um, the food rations and their equipment uh, but uh, the experience with the patients has actually made it all worthwhile so the field staff uh, does a comprehensive home based assessment and I, i think this is, should be available to all patients in the future there is tb is one disease where we do not have any risk stratification at, at diagnosis there is no uh, you know clear uh, you know mention the guidelines of clinical assessment so these patients are getting assessment of vital signs the, uh, the weight heights and the bmis Uh, we are measuring their performance status with a simple uh, modified uh, ecog scale which actually in four uh, the uh, scale of four means the patient is bedridden and zero means is completely ambulatory we are also assessing hemoglobin and based on these above uh, uh, you know assessments the field staff makes an assessment uh, whether the patient requires further referral for inpatient care often this referral doesn't work because of uh, uh, the family's reluctance the issue of transport etc of course they are all following up patients uh, you know contacts for symptoms and uh, then doing the evaluation on, uh, on them so they carry portable scadiometers and uh, machines and some of the children are very enthusiastic about repeated measurements uh, as uh, seen with this child this is hemoglobin estimation in the field and for the first time probably we were doing body composition assessment in the field with a multi frequency bioelectrical impedance analyzer and of course you can see the state of uh, wasting in this uh, patient i'm happy to share this uh, slide where you know the field staff has made this assessment uh, in a 52 year old the weight is only 31 kg the bmi is 13 the patient has hypotension has severe uh, anemia and this patient was again referred uh, uh, you know everything is there and uh, uh, if we took look at the baseline characteristics uh, we have a relatively a, a young population in our trial with a, again a preponderance of males the striking thing is the high proportion of patients who are indigenous uh, you know are from the indigenous population of scheduled tribes uh, they are more than 2/3 uh, high percentage are you know illiterate a family strip tb and tb deaths is also not uncommon and tobacco use and alcohol use is also common again uh, what we were disturbed to find is again the weights were virtually identical to what we documented in another state like chatisgarh more than uh, you know a decade ago and again they are in the same range of you know 41 42 and 35 kg in women median and again uh, bmi is uh, median uh, around the 16 Uh, around 16 our lowest bmi in, uh, in a patient has been 8.2 so uh, uh, again some more facts about their nutrition status very high percentage are underweight uh, nearly half are severely underweight uh, we have another cut off of bmi less than 14 and even uh, their one in six patients has a bmi less than 14 and anemia is very common and all the other comorbidities that we talk about diabetes uh, and hiv are, uh, are are less frequent mdr tb also in our cohort was not uh, significant in 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 uh, numbers again this slide shows the nutrition status of contacts the bmi again uh, we are talking of a uh, you know national average of uh, 18 in women and 16 in men this is almost uh, double of that in this uh, impoverished community again uh, significant underweight in children 
other interesting findings in the baseline were that actually we found uh, low levels of micronutrient deficiencies and this refers only to vitamin A and D. Uh, vitamin A uh, levels can uh, be lower in uh, TB, active TB, and they can return to normal. They had very low weights of, uh, you know, uh, levels of baseline energy and protein intakes. And CD4 lymphopenia was seen in the majority of these uh, patients uh, who are actually HIV negative. So this is a journey of a patient uh, initially bed bound, uh, 18 years old with a weight of 26 kgs, a BMR 10.7, starting to walk with a stick at this age of 18 after a few weeks, but now fully functional, but still uh, has not crossed the threshold of 18.5 uh, despite a weight gain of 16 kgs. Another patient, again, uh, in a, in a uh, uh, showing recovery within a few months to work. And he was actually wanting to show our field staff that he can now uh, you know, do manual work again. So in the context of uh, patient-centered care in, uh, in the context of the NTB strategy, I think along with effective anti-TB treatment, food support in us uh, and financial support in a country like India, along with supervision, should define this uh, uh, concept of patient-centered care. And uh, nutritional care should incorporate nutritional assessment, education and diet, and nutritional support, which can be community-based in most. Often, uh, food support is seen as an incentive and enabler, and I think that is a, uh, that is a wrong thing to you know, frame it as. Patients who have moderate and severe undernutrition require nutrition support as therapy. A lot of patients uh, who are maybe mildly under, uh, underweight are also experiencing food insecurity. So uh, uh, nutrition support is a form of social protection for them. And of course, for everybody, it can act as an incentive enabler. One other thing which is coming out from this trial is that food support uh, may be graded because some patients will require more uh, uh, of the quantity for a longer duration of time. And it cannot be a uniform package for everybody. This is for each program to assess, you know, depending on how severe the undernutrition there is in the program. Because the whole cohort has finished six months of TB treatment, we are in a position to comment on the secondary outcome of deaths here. So uh, in a recent cohort uh, whose study, you know, results of uh, published in uh, 2018, the uh, mortality was 6%. And this represented, you know, uh, patients from six states in India. We do not have a control arm here uh, in terms of the patients. So we can only compare it with uh, other cohorts. And reported mortality in those below six, 35 kgs was uh, you know, uh, even uh, lower in our, in our group. So overall, actually, um, mortality has been significantly reduced uh, by this package of interventions uh, in, in the cohort here. If you translate these absolute reductions into number needed to treat, it gives actually very uh, promising values, uh, which are comparable to, for example, use of dexamethasone in, in patients with COVID infection, uh, hospitalized patients. Uh, the other outcomes that we found was uh, uh, definitely lower rates of default. We have been uh, looking, detecting, uh, uh, keeping a close eye on relapse. And till now, there have been a relapse rate of 3.4%. The national figures are around 10% within two years, but we are still uh, you know, not completed follow-up in all. And we have detected more than 150 cases of active TB in the household contacts. So I will uh, end this uh, uh, presentation by saying, what then should we do? I think overall the one message is give undernutrition the same attention that is given to HIV infection, TB care and prevention. So when, it, when we talk of, uh, you know, um, Patients, everybody is tested for HIV co-infection. Everybody should have uh, undergo a nutritional assessment as well. And like for uh, ART, there should be a provision of nutritional support. And at the population level, unless we uh, reduce the numbers of patients, uh, people with HIV infection, uh, TB will not be controlled in Sub-Saharan Africa. The same goes for TB and undernutrition in South Asia. I think uh, we the first message is to address undernutrition in patients with nutrition support. This is something that we, it is something in our hands to advocate for and demand. And I think delaying or denying nutrition support to severely underweight patients is both scientifically untenable and morally inexcusable. I think a lot of people are dying uh, uh, due to a cause which is completely uh, you know, uh, preventable. 
uh, we should assess undernutrition in populations and advocate. We cannot address it, but we can advocate for uh, addressing undernutrition in the poor as part of uh, the uh, social protection and as part of achieving SDG goals. And there's a huge scope for conducting uh, research in TB in, uh, undernutrition interactions, which can be basic science, clinical, epidemiological, and implementation research. So these are some of the research priorities related to this uh, theme, which have been highlighted in an article by Pranay and uh, uh, team. Uh, I've also contributed to this. And the paper has been published uh, last year in Lancet ID. And I'll just like to say that there have been some recent positive developments in this uh, uh, neglected area. Uh, the Report India Consortium is doing a TV line study, uh, learning the impact of nutrition uh, on the immune response. Uh, so there have been articles not only by academics like Pranay, uh, but also by, uh, you know, for example, the South, uh, Southeast Asia Regional Office of, uh, of the WHO has recently published this in the January issue of the International uh, Journal of TB and Lung Disease. So this is the uh, picture of our field team taken in August 2019. I uh, owe it to them for keeping the trial going and achieving what we have done so far. And my grateful acknowledgments to the field team uh, led by project consultants, Ajay Mehar, uh, who's on this call, uh, Vivek, Dr. Dhananjay, our uh, other uh, uh, team members, including the 56 field investigators, my colleagues, Dr. Madhvi and Dr. Banu Rekha at NIRT, and uh, uh, our colleagues at the State TV Cell, Departments of Medicine at uh, Yenepoya, and of course, uh, to the people who have supported us, the India TV Research Consortium, DIC, Central Coal Fields, and, uh, and others, yeah, and uh, Let's Dream Foundation. So I'll end here, uh, and I'm open to any questions or comments. Great. Thank you, Madhu. Yes, Madhu. Thank you, Anurag. Sorry I missed at the beginning. I was... Um... I'm here on the ward. Uh, I wonder if people have questions or comments. It's, uh, as Madhu wrote, um, fantastic work, very impressive, particularly in the face of COVID. So um, usually we allow this, yes, Edgar has, so we start with the students who have the toughest questions, of course, and then move on. So Edgar, you had a, your hand up there for a minute? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Um, thank you very much for your talk. It was very inspiring, uh, very interesting topic. I have two, two, two questions. Uh, the first one is, if you have uh, had any problems with refeeding syndrome with these patients, so it seems like it's very important, like the undernutrition in, in the patients. So um, I was wondering if, if when you uh, when patients receive the the, the 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 food, if they have had some some problems with refeeding or so, because in Mexico this kind of patients, when we have these levels of undernutrition, we usually man, uh, treat them in the hospital. But but I know this is a different context, so that is my question. I think you're you're, you're yeah. muted, then, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Thank you for your question, Edgar. And I recognize that uh, you know refeeding syndrome is a, a potential complication of uh, feeding in patients who are severely underweight and may also have electrolyte disturbances at baseline. So your point is well taken. So uh, we, as you uh, as you saw on the slides, we are trying to recommend uh, all severely underweight patients to you know uh, to the public health system so that the feeding can be initiated you know, uh, in patient, but that doesn't ho often happen. Uh, we have not seen any, uh, we have uh, trained our field staff to recognize some of these manifestations of refeeding syndrome. But there was one study done at uh, uh, Janswa Sayog in Chhattisgarh on the frequency of refeeding syndrome in uh, similar patients. So although they found that there was some uh, decrease in the levels of phosphates, but really clinically, uh, these patients did not really develop any refeeding. So probably I think uh, TB is a unique situation where uh, they have poor appetite at the, you know, they're not like a person uh, in a famine situation where they will start eating very uh, well. So the appetite is also low. So actually, uh, inevitably, there is a, uh, the process is gradual rather than, you know, suddenly somebody will start eating a lot. 
but yeah that 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 is a concern that has been expressed and we have uh, not had any death so far or any other complications which would suggest a repeating syndrome thank you very much any other sorry any other students with a question i know there's a few uh, marcel and maz and jay have all got their hands up so to speak but any other students otherwise we'll pass to um, I, I, I can say uh, see a hand jay johnston i don't know yeah. if he's no, there's Marcel and Maz as well in the chat, but go ahead, Jay. Hi, uh, really great presentation. Um, have, have you had a chance to look in uh, people with TB at their incidence of immune reconstitution, uh, like iris, uh, HIV negative virus? And have you looked at their pulmonary outcomes? And just anecdotally, I know, notice that, you know, low BMI is associated with very significant iris and um, very significant lung disease post-TB. And I'm wondering if you have any data on that in particular. And then the second question I have, sorry, and just maybe a second part, a second question com um, completely unrelated is, do you have any ability to model, I know you don't have any specific outcomes right now, but do you have any ability to model to compare nutritional supplements to like a latent TB cascade of care? Because we know latent TB cascade of care doesn't work very well, but presumably nutritional uh, supplementation would be massively taken up. And I just wonder which one, like if you had a choice, which one would you do? I would hate to imagine you'd have to have that choice, but to convince people that nutrition for contacts would be more useful, could you model that out too? So two unrelated questions, thanks. So regarding the TB iris, um, I, uh, we have not really, uh, uh, we are not looking at that uh, outcome in this uh, cohort, but from my experience as a clinician, I've been seeing TB iris actually much before the HIV era. So actually the TB iris phenomenon was documented in lymph node TB and other forms of TB long before HIV arrived on the scene, but somehow it did not get a name. It was called a paradoxical reaction, you know, and uh, so we do see very often with lymph node TB and uh, uh, also with uh, CNS TB, uh, even in HIV negative. So this is a very, but I don't have a kind of, a, uh, I have not documented it in my own you know, clinical experience, but other people have done so. And actually speaking that, that uh, it's very frequent and most dramatically low, most life-threatening is actually with the uh, TB meningitis. We have seen patients who are you know, um, conscious on arrival, and then within seven days after starting the ATT, they have, uh, you know, uh, developed serious complications and even died. Uh, so, uh, so that is one question. The other about the modeling, uh, no, I, that's not, uh, it's an interesting question, but I, it's not in my area of expertise to do that, maybe, but we can just take it up as a potential, you know, um, a question for the uh, statistical group, yeah. So, um, Marcel or Maz? Hi, Anurag. It's great to see you again. Um, as you might know, there's another clinical trial by TB Center meeting uh, members uh, led by Greg Fox. And it actually has the same primary outcome, as I understand, which is uh, secondary cases and household contacts. So, could you let give me a sense of um, how many household contacts you have that have had co-prevalent disease or incident disease? Because if I understood, that was the primary outcome. Is that right? Yes, yes. So uh, we have about 10,345 household contacts. And there's a slight imbalance in the numbers in the intervention arm. The intervention arm actually has more contacts than the control arm, uh, about 900 more contacts. So this was beyond our control. So we have about 5,600 5, contacts in the intervention arm and about 4,700 in the uh, control arm. And at the moment, um, uh, as, I, as I said, you have 150 or more cases in this 10,000 uh, you know, uh, plus uh, contacts, which is around uh, maybe a uh, uh, percentage, about 1.5%, I would say, uh, overall. Uh, so that's the number, but we are still not completed follow-up in the entire cohort. And actually now, uh, uh, in the first year of follow-up, actually the, uh, the cohort, we diagnosed relatively few cases, but actually the numbers are rising. 
the literature says that uh, most people will develop TB in the first six months or one year, but we, our experience has been slightly different. Uh, Greg Fox, I'm not sure whether he is involved in an intervention study, but of course his papers from Vietnam on uh, you know um, uh, active case finding and contacts versus passive reporting, et cetera, were uh, very useful. Co-prevalent, we had about 27 patients uh, diagnosed uh, at the time that the patient was diagnosed or within the first two months. So uh, 27, uh, uh, so we have in total 177 uh, till now, 150 incident and about uh, 27 co-prevalent. Okay, thanks. Well, that's a good number to be able to determine whether you meet uh, your primary outcome by the groups. Yeah, thanks, great. But this is a cluster randomized trial, so that that's the, that that reduces the you know. Uh, thanks. Hey, Anurag, I, you know, really thank you very much. It was great to have this mess. So, <clears throat> yes, um, I I have a general question. I'm wondering, um, you know, historically, uh, TB was even called consumption or wasting. So, uh, so it appears that there is actually is a part of a disease that could cause muscle wasting and, uh, and reduction in, in BMI and, and, and so on and so forth. So, and I'm wondering how would you delineate the impact of the nutrition versus uh, uh, the impact of the disease and uh, because you know if you look at historically you know in Europe people even you know rich people were getting TB and they become uh, uh, you know they will have a become cachexic muscle wasting and I'm sure that those people were not under malnutrition at all but you know, this seems like there, there is, in fact, as part of a disease. So how would you separate these two factors in, in your studies? So um, uh, as I uh, said, that uh, given the uh, communities from which these people are coming, one comparison is what is this nutrition status of the so-called healthy contacts? And even there, we find that uh, low BMI is there in 30 to 40% of men and women. So it is very likely that before even they develop TB, they were already, uh, you know, underweight. Mm. Uh, another thing which is an indirect evidence is um, uh, of uh, indirect evidence of the long-term nutrition of these pe people is their heights. So TB cannot reduce the heights of anybody, you know. So uh, when we see the heights, again, there is a lot of, you know, the, the heights are low in India. So yeah. you have people who are underweight also have stunting, and then develop TB. And when you add the fact of delayed diagnosis to all these, uh, to, to, to this dynamic, then you have, you know, uh, severe forms of, uh, you know, wasting. So it's a combination of uh, not only the uh, pre-existing undernutrition, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the disease effect. And if, if you have undernourished, you have more extensive disease. And the fact that you're, uh, there is a significant delay in your diagnosis and initiation of treatment. That is what you see here. But uh, in a patient at the time, the other way of looking at it is uh, what happens when the uh, patient gets treatment. So if it was entirely due to disease, then they should come back to normal. You know? But that is not what is happening in patients with uh, you know, a TB in India. They, they remain underweight. So uh, that is another way of you know, looking at this uh, issue. But I think uh, what is, conf uh, you know, um, not regarded in this uh, whole discussion is whether the uh, uh, nutrition status is the effect of disease or whether it was pre-existing under nutrition, what are the implications of that low BMI? That is what we should be more most concerned about in a patient. So the BMI is 13. Uh, for the clinician, it is uh, maybe important to address that low BMI uh, uh, you know, actively. And that is not, not uh, what has not been done. You know, we have been, uh, uh, and that is something which I feel is uh, uh, is serious and you know and an urgent imperative. So, oh, sorry. Uh, so in that case, I guess so. Your hypothesis is that malnutrition increased susceptibility to infection. 
to initial MTB infection. Am, am I correct? Yes, uh, uh, not to infection because nobody has uh, really proven that malnutrition uh, increases the risk of infection after exposure, but definitely there is consistent data that it uh, uh, increases the risk of progression from latent TB to active TB. Fantastic, thank you very much. Can, yes, can. Great. Um, okay, it's two o'clock. I don't know whether the um, <clears throat> recording will stop or whether the whole thing will shut down suddenly. So just in case, I did want to thank you, Anurag. I'm sorry again, I missed the beginning of, on clinical service. I see there's a huge crowd that has joined this to listen to this talk. Um, so that's nice. It kind of reflects the interest both in the, the topic of malnutrition and TB, which you've been championing for uh, many years, but also, of course, the, uh, the interest in this ongoing massive clinical trial, which again, the final results were still anxiously awaiting, but the preliminary results look pretty dramatic so far. So um, I, again, I don't know if this recording suddenly stops, so that's why I'm kind of trying to talk quickly to thank you in case, <laughs> in case I'm gone. But uh, really, thank you very much, Annie Ray. It was great, great to uh, see you, hear you, and frankly, great to see all the interest generated by this. I, um, no, no, um, it's been wonderful actually working um, uh, under you and with all the team there. So I can just express my thanks again for that. <laughs> there was one other question in the chat box, but uh, I wonder if no, I can address it yeah. on this over time. Yeah. So, well, uh, I mean, feel free to keep going. I just, personally, I have to go back to the yeah. word. And also, okay. uh, again, it does seem as though we haven't suddenly expired our account. So. Please feel uh, somebody, free to uh, Jonathan, Jonathan asked whether there's a plan for passive longer term follow up uh, five years down the line. And uh, well, we don't have any such plan at the moment because, again, um, our uh, trial is of three years duration. But yes, uh, down the line, um, uh, maybe if some other group takes it up as a you know, follow up uh, thing, it would be good. Yeah. That is the most robust, uh, actually, evidence of what happens you know, long term yeah, uh, to these people. And yes, uh, we would really like to see the association of baseline BMI with long-term outcomes. Uh, so I think if uh, there are no further questions, um, uh, we'll close the session. Lissandra, are you going to? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, so thank you very much, Anurag. Thank you. To keep in touch. Yes, thanks. Thanks to the audience also, and many of my uh, colleagues in India have <laughs> braved the un ungodly hour to you know stay this thing with this session. So thank you for them also, and thank you for all the encouraging words. Uh, some thank of you. my members of our team are here, so they must have been really encouraged to uh, hear this uh, uh, you know support. So thank you so much again. Amazing work to your whole team. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you. Yeah.